Welcome guys to Remax episode 11 and this is a big mindfuck because Hug joined in late and I have to redo all the webcams so we're gonna start real quick and just throw it over to Huck for being late and being a slightly uh, small piece of shit. I love you Huck. So what have you been up to? Uh, nice intro eh? Uh, just what have you been up to and uh, yeah how are you feeling right now? Me? Yes. I, yes. Feel, I feel great. I just woke up. Things are wonderful the day has just begun yes. slept a lot i play uh i do this show and then right after i play in the, the 32 men one cup boys <laughs> thing right <laughs> so um i don't know i'm excited yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna have to try to find out a time to work out today um other than that i don't know I th i've been cutting back on caf caffeine lately so oh yeah why yeah uh, food, it's just apparently. healthier it's, yeah, and well, I'm not so excited about the food. The food's a little extreme. I'm like fucking constantly hungry. It's because um, my girlfriend's like putting us both on the same diet, mm -hmm. but I eat a lot more than she does, and I don't think she realizes that. So she's literally like bikini body diet thing, and it's like the smallest portions ever. And I'm like, I don't care about having a bikini body. I'm like all for eating healthy, but just give me more of everything. <laughs> So slowly but surely we're gonna figure it out. We'll see. Yeah. Or slowly but surely you're gonna shrink even more, Huck. There you go. <laughs> you're gonna get that bikini bod. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, man. Uh, cutting caffeine. I tried it. I slept 12 hours for three weeks in a row, and I was fuck it, and I, I went back on it like an imbecile. Uh, but yeah. Um, what about you, uh, Jeff? What have you been up to? Wait. Did you just say you slept 12 hours for three weeks in a row? Do you mean 12 hours a day? Yes. 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 You don't. That's. <laughs> That's I the other end of the spectrum. Dude. You don't need 12 hours of sleep a day. Oh, no, I'm no, but jelly. that's... I was I just... I like four. <laughs> no, no, but if you try to quit caffeine, your body will fight back, man. It'll be like, man, fuck you. You're tired now. Be a piece of shit. It's crazy. You should try it. it. Yeah, exactly, man. Like a panda. So what have you been up to lately, Jeff? Uh, well, thanks for having me on. I'm doing well. Yeah. Um, just the, the usual grind. My day-to-day -day is, is uh, playing StarCraft 2 and streaming it from, you know, like noon to 5 or something like that. And then I do a couple of role play shows. I do a StarCraft two show every other week or something like that. And and that's my day to day. And I'm doing content. We just released another one for a uh, lol. It's Judge Jeffrey. It's pretty funny. Good stuff. But just yeah. keep them busy. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I, uh, I like to watch your stream. I like I like to watch your DTS. You're very uh, <laughs> you're very inspiring, man. You always make it work. And then People I'm always like... say I do a lot. I don't think I do more DTS than anybody else at uh, all. I... Or, or your cannon rushes, man. I do do a lot of camera rushes. <laughs> you I see do. them go up and you're like, this is no, never going to work. Look, in if fairness, they're going to expand inside of five minutes, I think they deserve it. You know? <laughs> in fairness, so does Stardust, and he's a WCS champion. So you're, like, you're on the right road here, man. Yeah, oh, that's... no, no. I, I've never felt bad about that. SOS, for God's sakes, has gigantic amounts yeah. of money and camera rushes <laughs> and stuff like that. So I, the difference is, is their camera rushes are pretty damn good, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I thank you. I, I watch your stream as well. I actually watch everybody's stream here. Not to have too much of a bow wow moment here, or pow wow moment, but uh, yeah. a lot of good streaming these days, actually. Uh, when WCS is uh, a little bit on a hiatus, it's it's funny how many good streams there are during the day, isn't it? Yes, a lot of yeah. streams. Yeah, it's crazy how uh, every Korean has started being a lot more active as well. Um, Fear Dragon. Uh, actually, a lot of people uh, might have not seen Fear Dragon too much around, uh, but he's been uh, making a lot of good content. Uh, Breaking Out uh, has just ended as Season 3. We're going to be covering that a lot, but uh, what have you been up to uh, lately? Quite literally work and Breaking Out, and yeah. now I have free time and I don't know what to do. I actually, yesterday, I came home from work and I was like, well, I don't have to edit or prepare for anything. So I guess I'll just play StarCraft, but that doesn't make sense. I'm a commentator. I don't play StarCraft. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's I actually don't do anything right now. I'm just kind of calming down from the breaking out. Mm -hmm. but, well, yeah, that's always nice to uh, <laughs> be able to relax a little bit. Uh, what about you, Rifkin, the guy that gets uh, shoutout threads every week for casting 12 hours a day? What have you been yeah, up to? Yeah, I don't know. People are feeding my insanity and addiction, calling it passion. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I've literally been casting every day this month. It's been pretty rough. Uh, it's the wake up sleep cast. We t we knew that we were put taking a big project, trying to put like a league in the span of a month. But uh, yeah, no, it's been worth it. I don't have a lot that I've been up to because I have literally just been casting. So cool mm -hmm. story. I know. 
It, it felt uh, out of the blue, you know. Um, you just seem to come out of nowhere with that, and uh... well, we wanted to do like an. Uh, we really can't justify doing a North American big tournament like we've been doing. Like Korea made sense, Europe's been okay. We did it twice, mm -hmm. but like the viewership's just never been there for North America. So the best thing we could do was like overstack one of our tournaments with North America, give say server priority to all North Americans, and hope for the best beyond that. So that's the kind of the idea with this one. Mm -hmm. That's that's cool. Um, all right, I was hoping you guys would talk lo longer so I can fix all the <laughs> webcams. <laughs> this is such a shit show. The mark of a host that's doing something else. Mm, yeah, that's cool. Well, uh, hey, let's uh, here's some time filler. Uh, you guys all stoked for BlizzCon? Like whether you're going or watching it? I mean, like, I'm, I can't wait for announcements. <laughs> I mean, there better be legacy like, of the void, man. <laughs> like, yeah. Are you going, Jeff? By the way, you live so close, right? I am gonna be going most likely. Nice. Nice. Is it Blizzard giving you a pass, or you decided to to wait or spend two hundred dollars? Sorry. Uh, I, I will. Well, I'm, I'm going in some capacity or another. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, as you say, it's not like you need two hundred bucks though, because if you just go to the Starcraft Arena, isn't it only like twenty five? Like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So. Actually, yeah. Actually, I'm really glad they did that because I almost didn't get a pass, and if I didn't, I mean, I would have still gone for the sake of the Starcraft Arena. It just would have really sucked not to have been able to go to like the rest of the event. Also, did Blizzard them. hook you up? Uh, not yet, but oh. they told me they would, so I don't know. <laughs> oh. You're not part of the old boys club just yet, man. You Maybe gonna... not, but like I said, even if I can't get a ticket at the end of the day, I'm still going to go. I'll pay the 25 bucks for the arena ticket. Like, I, mm. I'm i going to enjoy it one way or another. Because, I mean, even if I get like an actual BlizzCon ticket, like I definitely want to check out the other stuff, but I'm going for StarCraft. So Yeah, and um, it still hasn't sold out, by the way, which is really weird. Uh, for That's why people... I'm not feeling too pressure to uh, grab a ticket right now. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I think it's like balcony seats, though, right? It's I think that like most of the other stuff is sold out, and filled up. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. So if you have a BlizzCon ticket, you can be on the front row or whatever, and then the balcony seats uh, are uh, those you can buy right now. So we fixed the overlay, guys. We can start with the show. Um, this week we're gonna cover community tournaments. There's been a lot of them, and we have two guests, and uh, I guess uh, someone who also participated in control, helping with breaking out. But we'll be talking about uh, the ROI. Uh, you know what you, we can do, or what they can do to improve it, and what the community uh, can do, I guess, to support. Uh, and so yeah, we'll just start with uh, we'll start with the one with. Medals is that his name? I always fuck it up. Uh, so he had the last foreign hope. We talked about it last week. The results. It was uh, Bunny beating Scarlet pretty convincingly. It was a six-man tournament, and he came out with uh, the financials uh, on Team Liquid. And uh, we'll be talking about just you know. Uh, first of all, <laughs> I know Rifkin's gonna talk about this, but uh, the way he stacked up. Um, his views or whatever his stats. Oh, you, stats. <laughs> you don't you don't do by view page. You do by hours watch. Is usually what sponsors want to see. But he put that in, and then he put the financials. And uh, so what ended up happening for his tournament is he had about two thousand dollars of sponsor income. Uh, he raised with the community one hundred fifty dollars on Indiegogo, one hundred twenty dollars in donations. Uh, he made four hundred seventy dollars from the stream revenue. And he made a total of 2.8k, and uh, the total expenses with the caster payments, uh, price pool, and everything, because uh, he was hiring uh, Rotterdam, right, Rifkin? Oh yeah, yeah, Rotterdam came on, mm. and yeah. I think Jurister joined him for the finals. Yes. So, um, so his expenses, he made a total profit of twenty-three dollars and ninety-seven cents. And uh, Rifkin, why don't you start about, you know, if you had some feedback to give him or maybe your thoughts on, on this tournament and how it went down? Well, I mean, I don't know. Here's the thing, and I've talked with Maddles a little bit about this. Like, first off, scheduling this sort of stuff sucks. I know there's a couple days, like, um, his finals ran over one of my qualifiers. So that's a situation where I'm not saying he would have had 5,000 more viewers. But I mean, the finals of the tournament suddenly has the less potential because 5,000 people are on my stream while Scarlet's going on, or vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. So it really, it sucks, because I know I worked with him to try and make sure we, we collided as little as possible. But what makes it even worse was I remember him tweeting uh, very, he was upset that, uh, well, it was, was uh, Nation Wars. Nation Wars Korea had come up on a day where he had thought it was free and then like all these other things. So I mean, for Maddles, it kind of sucked because it kind of felt like he... He took a day and he said like, okay, this day's mine. Nobody else touch it, but nobody really cares if he's saying it. Like, you can't call dibs, right? So the other training yeah. organizers walked all over him. So yeah. it kind of sucked for him a little bit in that regard. But it's not like he did anything wrong. He was very diligent in trying to make 
days different. Um, I don't know. Like, there's there's not a lot of feedback to give to something like that. It was it was a tournament that was kind of similar to what we did with the European or who's the best European. Uh, he had a very different format, which was cool. The uh, sort of round robin or whatever that was for the uh, the three days that they played out. Mm -hmm. I think um, at the end of the day, and I kind of told him this in private, like or not really probably on Twitter, like, I felt one of the war one of the biggest detriments to his show was he, it, it was kind of like, really, every time I saw him, it came off as beggy. Like, it, it was always asking for the money or the donations or the subscribers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I told him, like, if he stops doing that, he'll probably get, like, more people who want to be inclined to it. But, like, for me, personally, like, I, I try and sub and donate to, like, whatever StarCraft streamers I can. I'm, like, the last person who's going to, like, donate to somebody, despite my generosity, if they're sitting there asking for it every five minutes. So I don't know how big of a hole that played into it, but I know that for me personally, it was a big turnoff. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I mean, I thought the event itself was pretty solid. The games were good. He did a great job running it in a format that didn't like become overly complicated or stupid. I just think uh, at the end of the day, uh, as far as money goes and what he made from it, it kind of sucks that the donations were low and the Indiegogo was low and all that stuff. But the fact that he got like $2,000 from sponsors and stuff was actually pretty freaking good. Mm-hmm. Like that was really solid. Oh yeah, no, I saw that in the in the thread, and I was pretty blown uh, away by it. Uh, that seems like uh, such a high amount of money compared to some of the stuff you get, and maybe uh, Fear Dragon can tell us some of the stuff he gets. Uh, I, I don't want to get all your numbers or anything like that if you don't want to tell us. Oh no, us, you but... can. I will tell you all of them when it come mm -hmm. when we come to my tournament. Yeah, but it's very easy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it doesn't compare. Okay, I get I get the message. Uh, Hug, do you have any thoughts about the last four and hope when it comes to uh, financials and how it went? I guess. Mm, well, we already talked about it last week as far as yes. the tournament itself. I I just felt it was like lacking a lot of hype. Mm -hmm. If you don't lock up all the foreigners, and I I don't know. I just I didn't I didn't care about the tournament personally. I didn't really watch it that much. Um. There was a lot of players that probably weren't that good that were playing in it, and it was the format was cool, but it was really drawn out, and it seemed really long. Um, other than that, uh, I don't know. I would be I, I I would be happy breaking even to be honest. If it's my first semi major tournament, too. yeah, I I would be like okay, like this pre went pretty well. I broke even. I think most people expect to actually turn a loss when they're throwing a tournament of this size. So. Mm -hmm. um, he seemed a little unhappy about that, but I, I think it went well. And then if he has good rapport with whoever sponsored him, that's even better, knowing that they might come back in the future and continue to sponsor for him. So Hey, uh, just real quick, Desiree, you're not listening to Team Liquid, by the way. The key, it's the Twitch API, man. I did it not too long ago, and then it oh, untagged I had me. Oh, I actually had this issue over the weekend. You, I had to automatically disable like detecting whether my stream was online or offline because oh. it kept taking me off. Okay. So try disabling that and don't yeah. forget to re-enable it later. Okay, that should um, work. Thank you. But yeah, when well, you were just saying cock, like... Breaking even is a big deal. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I think that he is... He's, it's disappointing to, like, not break even. Even if you're expecting to, like, t turn a loss and you break even, it sucks because I think it's, like, pretty clearly demonstrating his post. The problem isn't just like, oh, you know, you managed to break even. It's the fact that you're pouring, like, hours and hours and hours of work yeah. into organizing everything. And you have to, like, not just consider what you actually spent, but, like, money that could have been made because you're spending your time doing something that's not giving you, like, as big of a return, right? Mm -hmm. It's like opportunity loss. Yes. I, oh, no, I, I agree completely about that. But uh, the fact, compared to other people and other tournaments and people, like, there's a lot of tournament organizers that don't break even i think he should feel lucky as himself i'm not saying everybody in starcraft 2 would hopefully do better i yeah. mm -hmm. i just want to actually add something to that point because that's actually something that's rather close to home um when we first got partnered on twitch through base street tv is because we did a show called starcraft 2 survivor some of you guys may have seen it some of you haven't but the too long didn't read version is we made like no money on that show and even though we put 200 bucks into it and community raised the rest of the thousand like we still didn't come close to breaking even but i would never in my history like rationalize that as a failure because it led to like what we are now today so for Mandel's like to break even on a first big event like this i mean this is his first big thing that he's really gone solo on i think it's actually fantastic when you consider like you take someone like me as the context who actually failed miserably on the first investment especially when i probably 
probably put ten times more time into stupid Survivor through editing than uh, you know just through casting. So, mm. I, but as I mean, you said, that's not a failure, and I think that's right. Yeah, really important for people to know. Like you, you said both, but I think it's truly not a failure. It, it was what got you attention, got you partnered, which then jumpstart your career. And I think yes. for a lot of people, it's it's funny because the expectations of tournaments and actually even pull Warhammer into this. My friends that host Warhammer tournaments get this crap from their their community as well. They're like, well, you host tournaments, so you guys are filthy rich. I don't know where that pre that the conception came. Like, Cause you're the, one the articles are all over about MLG like needing more money to run their tournaments. That was a little bit more outdated. They're doing better now. But in the past, they were like on the verge of sinking on millions of dollars because they hosted tournaments, which is largely in part an advertisement for the things that actually do make money. Tournaments do not make money. If you're making money on tournaments, you are established and you're doing really well. So I agree with Huck, for Maddles to break even, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring to the limelight what everyone else said, which is if you're hosting tournaments, it has to be a goddamn advertisement for what you're, you're hoping to do after that and for you as a person. And I think one yeah. of the important things that I also agree with is when Rifkin said, if you're spending the entire tournament advertising and, and talking about you know needing donations and stuff like that, you have to be really careful about what kind of image you're putting on because that can that can underdog you really quick. That can typecast you as like, you know, your tournament should be post advertisement. Then you're doing like the the sponsor advertisements. Then you're doing the established shout outs to people that did make it possible. And yeah. then with that raised platform, you use that raised platform to then go back out and advertise stuff. But I'll tell you, it, it's funny because it's like there is a way to ask for donations. That is a part of the business model right now. It's a weird gray area that we're in right now because. It used to be super frowned upon to ask for donations, but now with ad rev as poor as it is, this is one of the ways you monetize yourself in gaming. So you have to find a way to do it. I'm on the side of Rifkin where I say, don't do it too much. But if you turn on like a some of these top streamers on Twitch, not necessarily StarCraft 2 people, man, it's like turning into Wall Street on Twitch. It's like, you know, it's like a <laughs> fucking ticker going off over on the Soda right hand poppin', side. They're like, man. like, sold to you. I got another subscriber. I need another donation for $100. And they're like, you gave a hundred donation of $200. And there's like nothing going on, but it's just like, there's a game in the background, but there's all these fucking numbers flying around and they're just making money. And I tune in and I don't, and I'm like, well, I, I don't want to watch this shit at all. But there's, then they have 6,000 people watching them. So you got to pick a spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I agree. It's crazy the amount of money people can make, but uh, for medals, I feel like you have to look at the long term. You have to look at like what you can do exactly. once yeah. you st like. You're not doing a tournament. You're building to make more tournaments. So like, for him to be disappointed that he doesn't make money off the first one, I mean it's understandable since you put in so much work, so much time and effort. But hopefully, uh, you know he can. Uh, re regroup and uh, have more successful tournaments in the future. Well, it's or fine. Yeah. It, it was a success. To break yeah. even is a huge success. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it, it, it had unfair. conflicting issues. And he didn't have as many viewers as he wanted, but I still saw it. I mean, it was still had decent viewers. What, four to 5,000, right? Each, mm -hmm. each well, time. There's one more thing that, unless you're like a tournament organizer who's not a player already friends with everybody, uh, there's one other benefit where you start getting to know the players as well. So, I mean, the fact that Bunny won that, Bunny's going to be more inclined to come back with an event that Maddles is doing because Maddles has paid him, Maddles has worked with him before, and he hasn't been a nightmare type thing. Um, because I know, like, right now, a lot of people get lost in the fact that, you know, all, most gamers know each other. They're friends. But, like, people like myself or Fear Dragon or Maddles kind of coming in from the outside, we're kind of outcast a little bit we're not buddy buddy with everybody it's really hard to make those connections in the same way so for medals as well that's another big thing that people shouldn't overlook is the fact that now he's got connections with players who will play with him again in the future they'll participate in his tournaments yeah yeah it's awesome and to be fair like i just want to say also i, I feel like we may be over exaggerating like him saying that he considered this a failure because i mean he says like he does consider this a success i think that he may have just been a little bit more hopeful with how stuff was going that Maybe it could have gone a little bit better. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 of course. I agree. Um, I went all overboard there. Um, so next up is you, big boy, uh, Fear Dragon. Uh, so we have uh, Breaking Out, and I actually have the stats here so we can go back in time. And uh... All right. I, ha I have the income stats on oh. how much money I made from the show. So oh, those are all ready. You can go ahead with those I stats. have all the stats. Yeah. <laughs> I have all of them ready. I feel like this is going to be like when I get paid for casting. It's gonna be yeah, like... right. <laughs> so we'll start with uh, me typing invitational properly and then we'll go into the viewer numbers for the previous tournaments and uh, we were talking about this uh, pre-show actually 
And uh, Osteen kind of, you know, Osteen is good. It gave you better numbers, but it also doesn't show a clear picture of, uh, I, I guess, like progress. Because you went um, up a bump uh, where previously you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have because uh, Osteen was impossible. So you started the first one in November uh, 2013, an average of 350, a peak of 700. Your second, I guess your finals wasn't as successful. Breaking out uh, number two, uh, the, the breakout invitational, sorry, and number two, uh, May 2014, average about 300, peak 500, second day average 400, peak 500. And then, uh, this was, well, your breaking out tournament, I guess, uh, the breakout invitational season three, um, average 500, and then the second and third day was average 1,000 with a peak of 2,000 every time. Uh, are you satisfied with uh, the way things are going? I'm really satisfied. I do also want to say, like, shout out to, we're, I guess, on this direction on the cameras or something. Like, wherever <laughs> Graham is, yes. uh, for hosting me basically every single day, that was actually a huge source for a lot of viewers that actually came in. But, I mean, there's it's so hard to actually, like, look at these statistics and actually gather a whole lot of information because there's, there's so many things that change between each season. Season one happened on a Wednesday, a Thursday, and a Friday. And mm -hmm. it was also, like, I kept advertising as, this is going to be broadcast on MLG's TV. And then Axel Toss and Axel have got laid off, like, three or four days before the event. Oh, the right. Whole thing, <laughs> the whole thing went crashing uh, down. Axel, and then Axel yeah. Toss, like, was still amazing enough to be like, hey, I can still cast, even though I haven't slept for, like, 36 hours or something. So it was, like, the final day, he was, like, really tired. And maybe it wasn't, like, the best cast I don't really blame him for it. He was, like, in the middle of movies. So, like, all those kinds of things happen season one. Season two, like, it's a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday, like season three was. But then I don't necessarily have, like, the big name contours, like, in control, like, day nine and everything in there. Of mm -hmm. course, I have uh, amazing Rifkin in there. But it's, so. it's like, so many things change that it's really hard to pinpoint where the change, like, why the change happened. Mm -hmm. Similarly, like, hosting makes it really difficult to actually tell how many viewers I get. I would actually love if like Twitch oh, viewership I... numbers would just like show how many how many viewers okay, are like from the host. Hang on, hang on though. So here's my argument to this, because I've actually been talking with some others about this, uh, the, the, the downside to hosting, quote unquote. If you had requested a Twitch front page time and you had a bunch of people coming from this Twitch front page, but like then leaving immediately because they had no idea about StarCraft 2, like you'd still have those incredibly high numbers, yeah. but the difference is you'd have much lower retention because they didn't really care about what you were doing. I kind of think hosting is almost better than that in this regard. So like a lot of people see the front page as the most valuable thing you can do, and it does bring in a ton of viewers. I'm speaking from experience, but the problem is all those viewers come and go within like 10 seconds. But if you're hosted by somebody who's doing similar content, you see that, okay, Rifkin hosts you for say 2,000 viewers, and you finish the cast with 1,800, you know that you actually kept a pretty good number of viewers, even though they may not have been in your channel the idea is that you still retain the viewership so i mean like it's kind of hard to fudge the numbers because you're like well were these really mine in the first place but it's at the same time like if you're entertaining enough to keep those numbers if you had just been more popular in the first place you would have had them so it's kind of like i i wouldn't dwell too hard on it because if you can keep yeah. the numbers then you're doing good yeah yeah yeah. yeah i was just playing devil's advocate you know uh it's pretty great that he was able to keep this many amount of viewers and uh also this this time around you had the addition of in control a day nine, and you also had. Uh, how did it go with uh, Tempo and Zombie Grub? Those are I didn't watch oh. those. So, wow, okay. <laughs> so, in, so in control day nine. Just to clear, like obviously be clear, yes. in case it wasn't already apparent. I've never casted with either of those guys. Mm -hmm. Um. So by the way, thank you for that, Jeff. Um. But Zombie Grub and Tempo, I've casted with them a good bit. Actually, Zombie Grub, for those who don't know, she used to actually cast. Uh, something called the underrated team league way back in the day like i think it's actually like the place where ripkin actually saw zombie girl for yeah, the first yeah. time and recruited her from so we were both originally casters for that so we've known each other for a while tempo i've actually been commentating like a lot of other smaller like events like team gravity fight nights and that kind of stuff demo c sports team league um so i those were kind of like my comfort casters where i know how those casts are gonna go i'm not gonna be super anxious about it mm -hmm. and It's gonna be weird to say with in control here, but I was quite literally like shitting my pants Thursday before I was gonna cast with in control because I was like, oh my god, I better have my shit together. And the same thing happened with day nine. 
So mm. it was kind of nice to have a small little break time in between where I wasn't well, shitting myself. in his defense, too, I sent him a message saying he better have his shit together one day before. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it. Yes, of course. Um, how was your experience casting the, bra- the break... Breaking out? The Breakout Invitational, sorry. Uh, People control. mix it up so much. Yes. It's supposed to be Breakout Invitational and the show is breaking out. Um, but yeah, casting was great. And again, it's going to get super weird because Ink Control is right here. We're going to start talking about cast went. And, <laughs> and I would love to hear if you have any uh, thoughts on it also. But I think the cast of Ink Control went well. So one thing that definitely becomes became much more apparent when I casted with both Ink Control Day 9 is how much... And this is going to, again, sound like... It's not something I hear a lot of casters talk about, but it made me realize how little I know about the game. Oh. And that kind of excites me because sometimes when you start casting with like the same people all the time, especially when you're like a smaller tier caster, like I'm much smaller tier than like not only in control, but even like Rifkin and everything. Um, I only really commentate with up and coming casters usually, which means that most up and coming casters are kind of shout casters because if you're really good at the game and you have a good understanding of game and like game knowledge mm-hmm. you're probably either one a player or two you're already doing really well because analytical commentators that are good are kind of hard to find mm-hmm. so i'm so used to commentating with like other play-by-play commentators etc that i got to see like an entirely different perspective of like oh this is what it would be like if i'm commenting with someone who really you know has their shit together in terms of game knowledge etc so that was really revealing to me, and I kind of was unprepared for that uh, mm-hmm. when I commented with In Control. I think people may have been able to, like, if they go rewatch the VOD, they can probably point out sometimes, like, wow, what the hell is Fear Dragon talking about? Um, hopefully I did a good enough job of sticking together with it, but it was amazing. It's actually, like, so different to commentate with people who are, like, really professional, because there were so many times that, like, Jeff and uh, Sean would actually, like, save my butt from saying really stupid things or they would like play off something that I said really stupidly in a really like kind of more positive light like they'll turn it into oh well you know that's interesting proposition let's think about that and this is probably why that's not the case but that does lead into something like they'll play it off really really well and I was I was just actually like really happy it's so weird because people talk about like players Mm -hmm. they get to like I know like, when you talk, think about, like, high master players, they get excited when they play GMs and stuff. Yeah. Because then it's like, oh, I have the replay of how this person played and how I fare against them. I basically just got the same thing, but, like, the caster version of it. Mm-hmm. So now I get to go back and rewatch it and figure out what the hell I was doing wrong, etc. So I really enjoyed it. What about you? Little... Uh, sorry. What about you, Jeff? I want to know, uh, because, you you know, you've casted big stages like BlizzCon, DreamAC. How did it? Obviously, it's not the same thing, but uh, how was your experience? Oh, it was great. Um, I, I've cast smaller tournaments before in the past, and I've mm-hmm. uh, worked with projects like this before, and I I genuinely, like, there's a lot of people, I don't know. When I say a lot of people, what I mean is Redditors, which actually ends up being, like, 1% of the actual people that watch the game, but there's a lot of people that will say, like, oh, I can't stand watching lower-level games anymore or something like that. I've never had that problem. Uh, super low level, like if it was a bronze tournament, I think I would I have a very difficult time, but these are these are very good players, and they're playing really exciting, fun games, so I get excited about that alone. It's just fine for me, mm-hmm. and uh, I've worked with Fear Dragon in the past before on various different things, and like, I, I, I've never had, the, I, I guess I'm lucky too, I've never had the experience where someone's like, you're gonna be casting with Bubbly Bo Tompkins, and it's like, hi Bubbly, and he's like, hello, and it's like, oh shit, this is gonna be a, a terrible cast. I'm really worried about it. <laughs> what is never that been name, like that. Bubbly? <laughs> well, you have to come up with a name that isn't actually somebody. I could be like, well, I was terrified <laughs> of casting with Bobby uh, Lo- Love Dragon, you know, who's just like really shitty commentary. Oh about yeah. To like, no. Yeah. Uh, that needs to be an alternate like ego, by the way. Just that's my that's my new alt uh, ID on Starcraft. So I, I've never had that experience. So I was I I am totally comfortable, totally fine, and I thought it was great. In fact, uh, I, I had to pull a little bit of a dick move because beforehand, uh, Fear Dragon is like super, super professional, very organized. He's like, uh, did you watch the videos on the players? Uh, I want to. Did you like? What's your summary of how they their play style is? I want to sync up on this. And I was like, yo. Uh, I'm it's fine. We're totally okay. Like just <laughs> take a deep breath. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do this. I don't really want to have a 20 minute discussion about the players because I play with these guys all the time and like 
we're okay. And he's like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, and I felt bad for him. I was like, man, that, if you look at that out of context, that was a pretty dick move. But I, I think uh, you need, the context is important though, because honestly, I think it was like right. It also, I think it also helped me, because again, I was already saying I was sort of like nervous about it, anyways. Yeah. So to be honest, thank you for that. That actually helped calm me down a little bit. I, I stopped thinking so much for a little Good. bit. It was either that or I could just like full tilt you and you like start freaking out and crying <laughs> into your hands. But I'm glad it went that way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, no, it was great. Good. Rifkin, you wanted to say something and I cut you off. Oh, no, I was just uh, fear dragging because we're buddies. Like, I think if I was a stranger with him, I'd treat him the exact same way we were professional. But like when he and I were cast to kill up America, I was just stop. I'd be like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> yeah. Like, why did you just say that? <laughs> like, Yo, dude, by the way, that, that first Copa America cast, I like was I pulled out like very basic statistics that I looked up like on a Liggy like 10 minutes before the broadcast. And you're like, what? You have statistics? Get out of here with that. I'm like, I, these, are, these are like so easy to get. Come on, man. Yeah, that's true. I like likes a great site. Um, I just want to finish uh, the breakout invitational. Um, so the format was a little weird to me, and uh, maybe we can talk about that. I don't think it was bad or anything, but uh, it felt like a lot of best of threes on the final day before the actual finals oh, and semifinals. So, so all of the best of threes on the final day were mm -hmm. show matches. Yeah, it yeah. had no impact on the tournament. Yeah, but uh, that's also one thing I was wondering because you know uh, some some of the mat some of those matches was uh, mirrors, and so if they won their semis, they would play that specific mirror in the finals. You think uh, looking back on it, you would have taken like just a Protoss because there was no Protoss left, so there so would be I'm, no way to study. I'm really glad that Graham brought this up earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but about player connection connections with players, I don't have many. Mm -hmm. I actually like the the list of players that I probably like the really high level pro players that I have on my Skype are probably okay. Yes, you Desro in yeah. control. Yes. Who was I wanted to be commentating the event, not playing the show matches anyways. Um, I had QXC, Masa, Hendrilis from the previous season of breaking out, and Puck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of like I don't really have a whole lot of options unless I want to reach out to, again through like Team Liquid and all that like random like tweeting out and direct messaging people like it's I have to really work to try and get a hold of people to try and do those show matches and for me I also want to like try and prepare those in advance mm -hmm. and I don't know who's gonna actually be in the semifinals until the day before so it's it's like cutting it a little bit too close for me to say like okay, it's now, whatever, like, midnight the day before the event starts at, uh, you know, noon tomorrow. Let me start messaging players and see if I can get somebody to play, like, four best of threes. Like, that's cutting it a little bit too close for me. So I just prepare that stuff, like, a month in advance. Yeah. I mean, it, it worked out anyway because the only TV t or the only match that was played in the show matches that ended up being that matchup was Intense. He played a yeah. TVT, but he still won the finals 4-0. Um, and there was a little bit of upsets. Uh, we talked about it last week. I don't want to do all the results, uh, but we thought Bells and Jon Snow were the favorites, uh, and Intense being like the third favorite. And then Jon Snow lost to the semis to Brazilian. Bells then make it out of groups, and then Intense wins 4 0. So, uh, grats to him for that. And uh, he made it, he earned himself a thousand dollars. So now we uh, talked about the viewership, we talked about your co casters. Uh, the format, how was the money situation for breaking out? Did you break oh, out? Yes, awesome. Okay, so yes. I, I'm going to keep this one short, okay? Yes. Hmm. About twice a year, I run the show breaking out, and I put in $1,000, and I lose $1,000. All right, that's the ad. That's that's the income. Those are the finances for breaking out. Yeah. Actually, I lose a little bit more because then I also the buy, like, those plushies and, like, other stuff but yes it's uh, there's literally i think i've earned a dollar 93 cents over youtube ad revenue like that's it well, as you say it sucks 199 pennies, man. It, it really sucks the future is not partnered not because you can't run ads and make some money back but like it i also got partnered, the quality I got of the partnered show. yesterday though oh I well take all that then to you yeah run those ads no. son like <laughs> yeah and uh i mean it'll help uh just you know make some money over time uh being You'll partnered be literally dozens of dollars before you can even add enough <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I don't know what ad revenue you guys get. I mean, it depends what <laughs> I've streamed like forty one hours Several this month dozens or something. Of dollars. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I think I, I, of dollars. I think I, I, I streamed forty one hours this month so far and I'm still in double digits for commercial money, so 
Good yeah. luck with the the commercial money. But I do you not about take seventy hours, and I make about two hundred and fifty, two eighty, three hundred dollars. Yeah, mm-hmm. that sounds about accurate. Do you do you not take donations or? I put all the donations into the prize pool. So here's actually like for anyone that's not really familiar with it, the way that the thing works is I put up a thousand dollars, and then I just say if you want to donate to increase the prize pool, go for it. And season one, it got I raised like a thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Season two, I raised a thousand one hundred fifty and like ninety nine cents. Mm-hmm. And then season this past season, I raised a thousand dollars, pretty much almost exactly like ninety seven cents. So I've been able to raise like a thousand dollars or so, but I, I'm just putting it toward the prize pool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, it's great for the players. And uh, I was actually thinking about that like uh, two nights ago, whatever, before going to sleep. I'm like, so what's next? Because if we look at it, you've been pretty lucky. Um, because a lot of these players, like if we go back season one, you know, Jon Snow finishes second, Sarovati, you even had Hello Kitty in there. And then if we go back to season two, you had Angela Quinning, which. You know, is debatable. Is he really breaking out? Because he was in, Ch- uh, in Premiere back then. And then you always oh my have... Oh, God. Okay, can I interrupt so you really quickly? Yes. I want to defend that one because this, yeah. this is something that I get consistently, constantly, whenever Hendels comes up. He applies... So, like, ab- there's a whole process. It's called yes. the Breakout Invitational, but there's actually only, like, two invitations. Yes. And everyone has to apply. This stuff happens... Like, the Invitational happened in May. Yes. He got in in, like, February. He wasn't in Premier League or anything like that. This is before he, like, 3 owed Scarlet or, like, anything yeah. else. Hendels is, like, known in, like, the Canadian scene. Yes, yes. And people, like, may have heard of him, but he was, like, not getting... Well, his biggest result was getting second to Masa every single he game. He was, like, 17-2 and two against Destro by then, so I think it's, like... <laughs> 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 oh, yes, that's true. He beat me many times. Um... Which of two come from? Disconnects, or...? Uh, what? No, no, I fuck you, man. Come on. I beat him in Montreal on my own turf last time we played offline, so it kind of matters, okay? Come on. Yeah, language barrier. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, um, but you know, so you gotta, I think you got kind of lucky with all the player pool you have. Are you gonna take back people that played in previous seasons? Like, what's next for season four? The rule that I use, and this might be apparent by the fact that Jon Snow's in season Mm -hmm. three and season one, Mm -hmm. is that there's basically a one season layover right now Mm -hmm. where if you were in like season two you can't be in season three etc okay um so i think i'm probably going to be sticking with that rule because we also like for those who don't know everyone applies and then we actually go through i have like a committee formed of secret individuals and we basically approve or deny like if huck applied i'd be like no you don't actually need this money (laughs) like man i asked you so many times and you let me down i just want to break out man just want people to recognize me yeah, like, I mean, for example, if, say, I don't know, Hendrils could apply it again for season four, I'd be like, no, dude, you're you're really freaking good. Mm. Same thing for, like, Arium or something. What about Nathanius? Like... <laughs> I don't know. I guess he's uh, he's not broken out as a player yet. Yeah, because uh, no, he's going to be trying not. for... He's, he's Nathanius. No, but he's, he's going to be famous. trying for Challenger, man. What if he makes That's it to true. premiere? But, but I, I think his goal is to give money to people that don't have money and are it's an incentive it's it's an incentive system for people who are trying to get into it but there's no like intermediate step between i'm going pro and i think that i can do this if i keep putting time into it Mm -hmm. yeah that's like the entire purpose of this yeah so nathanius wouldn't necessarily need it Mm -hmm. he's already financially secure and if he wants to be a pro then good luck but I think it's less about the money for a person like Nathaniel. It'd be more cool to see him competing, and if he actually did well, yeah, people would think that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't hopefully, think anyone. I hopefully WCS. I I want to see Nathaniel make. No. Oh yeah. I don't I'm know. Try. Ch- even Challenger would be. I don't know, Wait, man. You said you're gonna try. I think you'll. I mean, <clears throat> like you got to think about all the Korean players that were in Challenger and Premiere, and then you got to like. Just take them out of the equation. So every North American that was in Challenger, just bump them up to Premier almost. Oh, yeah. And I then there's going to be all those spots in Challenger. Man, well. I, don't, I don't know. Play devil's advocate. Like, if Nathanius makes it into Premier, we'll never Desiree. hear the Desiree. end of it. We'll never <laughs> hear the end of it, hey, though. It's hey, true. Desiree, Nathanius is, Premier. like, the only foreigner to make top eight or top eight or sorry, uh, quarterfinals of the Alima League. I'm just saying, so. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. No one wakes up for that, man. That Come on. One. That's oh. all Koreans, man. Can you tell me you could beat Marine King and make it to the top four? I don't think so. Sorry, Des. Yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> I can't win that battle. Uh, so, 
Uh, breaking out season four. Do you have any time uh, timeline? Um, I'm planning to try and like maybe do an announcement in February, qualifiers oh. in like March, just like one month mm -hmm. at a time. So your goal like, is just thing. yeah. Your goal is just two a year, then, right? It's not exact. It's not like an exact science of like I'm starting every single year in February and starting every single year in August. It's more just like, okay, how freaking tired am I right now? How long will it take for me to recuperate and do this again? Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of where I just set the next one for. Okay. That's cool. It makes sense. Uh, so, best of luck uh, for that. Uh, I was really excited about uh, excited about having you on the show uh, because of just, you know, the success you've been having. Uh, so, next up on the list is Rifkin with his 32 boys Ooh. and his one cup. <laughs> best name. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yo we got a trophy did you know i i haven't posted oh pictures god. yet oh god so well, yeah no. Dr as i have dram hacked it up because it's the 32 guys one cup on it instead but we're like you know fuck oh. it the name's stupid anyways let's just keep it so oh. we're gonna be shipping that out to whoever wins at it just fyi awesome. mm -hmm. so if we go back uh so you started with a big tournament you had a you had a big intro with tempo making a song and so that was your first big tournament, right? Man, no, hang on. This is, I'm so salty about this. We made that song. I wrote that shit, and he <laughs> sung it. Like Everyone seems to think it was all tempo, and I love him, and I give him all the credit in the world because he made it awesome. But, yo, I wrote that shit. I'm just saying. Are you, you think yeah, you're you some like kind of Eminem? Or? Yeah, 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 definitely. Arm, mom's spaghetti, arms ready, etc. All right. So to go, to go back with the timeline, so was it was, that's the first one, right? Yeah, the big one was the first big event. We mm -hmm. had been saving up for months leading up to it because we didn't have a big subscriber count. We didn't have floods of donations coming in. Uh, I was taking cuts out of my own ad revenue because uh, Zombie Rob and I, for those who don't know, we split the ad revenue like pretty much 50-50. Mm -hmm. So I was taking cuts out of my end on top of subscriber uh, fees. We were just basically taking like 30%, 40% here and there, stockpiling up like the winter <laughs> uh, in order to run that, that, that first one. And it was awesome. Mm -hmm. By the way, your Liquipedia page, you need uh, volunteers to get on that shit because I can't find uh, the information I'm looking for right now. So you had that. Uh, I think we'll just fast forward to maybe your last one before 32 guys, one cup. Which... So the wait, there's more? Yes, yes. So your second uh, European tournament, right? Yeah, that's the second one we did because I really enjoyed working with them for the first one. Like mm -hmm. I more so than the Koreans. I, I, I have no shame saying that. Oh. I see. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're definitely not... They're playing for the viewers, not just the money, I think, when it comes to Europeans. But uh, so I was the, you know, I was the financials because you're putting every everything you earn back into it. Yeah. But is there... So, yeah, yeah. well, I guess you, you glanced over the... the uh, who's the best European one? But the quick mm -hmm. timeline for those who don't know about our tournaments is uh, we took the ad revenue we made from the first one, which was actually close to a thousand bucks, which obviously didn't cover that price point the slightest. We put it into the second one, a community run raised the rest of it. And I realized very quickly that if we wanted to, we could probably community raise like one big tournament once or two months at a time. But like that's the idea of Base Street TV was always to become self sufficient. So while donations help a lot, we couldn't rely on that model. So uh, we're trying to go back to our subscriber count. Our subscriber count's quite high now. I think we're, I could boast that we're like above 500 since we got those extra new emoticons. Mm -hmm. So with that, we're able to like more confidently put on these tournaments, these events. And now it's like, okay, well, with that sort of subscriber count, like once every two months, we actually have that money right there if we don't run like a show match or something in between. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we got the attention of like CM Storm Chairs for Gaming, like um, they're putting some money into it, none, the, none of which I can really disclose, but mm -hmm. yeah, you know, they're fine. helping out. So um, it's cool that we can actually start running these things without burning a hole in anybody's pockets. Well, your uh, pocket. Well, it's less our pocket now. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, everyone's like, because I talked to Todd about this and some others too. They're like, they're astonished that like we don't take money from the subscriber count. But the whole idea of the subscriber count is like, look, you guys put money into Base Trade TV, so you're gonna get something out of it. And mm -hmm. that's the tournaments we put on. That's more content we can do. Because the thing is that sucks. Is like we're not gonna be WCS anytime soon. Mm -hmm. We're not uh, having our own Acer Team Story Cup. So like, this so. is what we do. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> one day, one day. Rifkin but... announces war on WSS. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to call this one, by the way. So, 32 points one cup. I just want to throw this out there. I talked to some people at Blizzard and I said, can we call this not WCS? It would be kind of funny. They're like, no, absolutely not. So, that's <laughs> plan B of 32 points one cup. Yeah. And you, you've got some flag for it, too, eh? How do you uh, yeah, but the thing is, of I don't really care. Yeah. 
They had like okay, we've had a lot of people contacting us too, and I'm talking like legitimate people who are like uh, team managers and stuff, saying like, look, if Madalisk plays or Scarlet plays, are you guys gonna change the name of the tournament? And my response to all of them have been like, no, it's a stupid name on purpose. It's a bit of a joke. Like, you know, you we're having some fun with it. Rights at some point, you know, if, right, people, like, if men want to defecate into each other's mouths, and you know, there just so happens to be a tournament named after it, that's fine. Mm. Well, I mean, the thing I'm learning very quickly, by the way, is uh, none of the Koreans okay, actually know drum. about that, by the way. Like, uh, like nobody knows about that. So that's a bit Let's awkward. Let's show them. Let's Good. show them. <laughs> they educated all these people. Where did this name come from? Well, uh, but no, I mean, the, the idea is like for us, I, I don't think names really matter. We made... It, this whole came down when we started who's the best European. People got so upset. They're like, how could you call it? He's not the best European. You didn't invite this person or that person. I'm like, you could never... It, the point wasn't to like be the, okay, this guy's the best European at the end. Who cares about WCS? Who cares about Fragbite or anything like this? It was just a fun title for the name of the tournament. And since then, we kind of realized like we could have fun names for a tournament and just fucking run with it. I mean, our last one was Wait, right. There's More with Billy Mays as the mascot. I mean, come on. Like, this is like, at this point, we're just trying to, I guess, push and see what we can get away with. I don't know. Let it's funny. Me, let me cut through, okay, the advertising mastermind that is Rifkins for a lot of people, <laughs> people out here. <laughs> You name a tournament something controversial, people talk about it, people get interested in it, and it fucking works. That's that's been since the beginning of time. Yes, these are funny names, but thirty two men, one cup. Come on. You can put on a sheepish grin and be like, a lot of people didn't know about that video. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people did know about like that, that video, and it's funny as fuck, and that's mm -hmm. great. And then if you name a tournament the best European player, of course that's preposterous. There's so many different ways to measure who the best European player is, but that's fucking interesting. If you name this, if you name a tournament the the top three controlled North America tournament and you don't invite Huck, <laughs> then that's hilarious too. And that's going to get a lot of controversy and people are going to talk about it. Or even better yet, you do invite Huck and then Huck maybe doesn't win that tournament. And then people are like, oh, you're not top three control anymore. And then, yeah. and then that's advertising for you. And that's how tournaments work. When you name a tournament like the... The Rifkin Classic Fall in October, between the weekends <laughs> of the 13th and the 20th, people won't, they'll call it fucking that, that tournament. They don't care. You're, you're not wrong at all. I'm definitely not so devious as to think about these things ahead of time, but it's more these one of those things like, oh, this happened to work out well. I, it's just, it's, for, if you guys ever watch Base TV, you know, we're, we're hardly professional. We like to have some fun. You know, we got fucking first blood built into the game for God's sake, like whatever. Uh, it's it's just it's a different experience, and I like that we could try, kind of approach it with a more laid back aspect to it. But I mean, that's the thing. Like you've got your WCSs, you've got all these tournaments that are exactly the same. That's like that's our thing is just being a little more laid back, a little bit more crazy. And, mm -hmm. and that's why, like even on a larger scale, the model of like Home Strike Cup is so celebrated. There shouldn't be a Home Strike Cup every month. There should be two or three a year, and they're so different from everything else. They're great. Or uh, we've had a few of the tournaments like fucking ESL did the one player wins everything tournament. Oh my god. If you did that every <laughs> single month, you would destroy the scene almost singularly with the tournament. Like it'd be horrific. It's terrible. And even just to do it once, a lot of people were like, this is wrong. But it was interesting and people talked about it and they hit 100,000 plus viewership, uh, you know, largely in part because people wanted to watch a PvP for $100,000. That's interesting. Yeah, let's that's that's definitely uh the the unique aspects the look at me the flashy whatever you want to look at it it's just i don't know it's for me it's bottom line just have fun <laughs> yeah. while making all the money well but that's <laughs> that's what but i want basically get... the next evil geniuses don't you know i just yeah you're not wcs and you're not evil geniuses right I mean, look at this yeah. i got a monster can right here jesus christ it's like there you go it's already happened but uh that's the next thing i want to get to so we've had the indiegogo from medals from destiny we've had uh just you know having a donation link uh you, we have refkin with the subscribers uh, what else can there be done? You know, uh, can we see? I know you sell some caps. I know you have you fucking sell slippers, and you've been no, stacking what? up the money to make a tournament <laughs> out of fucking slippers. Like, yeah, what the I fuck is really this? Feel. The guy was gonna give me like five bucks per slipper personally, and I was like, no, no, let's make it more. But like, this goes directly towards a tournament instead of me. So that was pretty. That was a pretty sweet deal to stumble That's a great upon. Idea. It's borrowing from Dota their uh, compendium stuff that they do, which yeah, is fantastic. I've... Okay, so like. I don't know. What do you ask? Is it like ways for ad revenue or like ways for people to make money? Like I, I mean, I'm happy to answer anything, but I don't know 
what you're asking. So, do we need, like, people to start selling shirts? Do we need, like, fucking merchandise, oh, okay. so, posters, pins, wristbands, you name it? I think it's it's hard, though, because you gotta make a brand. Like, if you... Okay, mm -hmm. like, let's say anybody here. Let's say Fear Dragon, because no offense to Fear Dragon, I love you, you're probably the least popular person here. If he starts selling t-shirts, his close <laughs> friends will buy it to support him, but... You know, the your average social StarCraft fans gonna be like, oh, that guy did that one tournament breaking in or something. I don't wanna whatever. <laughs> but like you take something like in control, even if you don't watch in control stream, you know he's been on like DreamHack, he's you know, the face of evil geniuses half the time. I mean, you're more inclined to buy like one of his t-shirts. So it's kinda hard to just push merchandise. That doesn't that doesn't work, and we learned this very quickly. So what we started doing was like we started giving away a lot of merchandise, and because people wouldn't win, all of a sudden they would want to buy it. So there's definitely like more to it than just simply, oh, your face on a shirt. Here you go. Good luck. Have fun. You gotta. You definitely have to game that one a little bit, so to speak. Okay. So you don't think uh, the answer for Medals or Fear Dragon or even yourself is just to push shirts? So I don't hard. think you make enough money from that to really be worth it either. I mean, I don't. I make. I think it's like two bucks per T-shirt sold or three bucks at most. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's really not a lot because I do through Spreadshirt and I don't have like a manufacturer or anything like that. But I mean, mm -hmm. so we can give our stuff out there. I got so sad. We went to I Am Toronto. I like we ran into like ten people wearing our T-shirts there, and I, that blew my mind. I was expecting to see like maybe one or two close friends, but like we had like ten people in the row and like the fifth row back, whatever, just all wearing our shirts on like day two. Like that to me was like crazy because all of a sudden like you realize, wow, people are actually wearing my shit. Like what the. F <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. swearing, but... what about you uh, in control with your I know you sell shirts do you do well uh you know to be honest merchandising it's it's tough in for all the reasons he just listed but like uh yes and no like every month I sell you know as little as two or three or as many as 20 mm -hmm. but the shirts are like 25 bucks and usually the deal you have at least at, at, if you have somebody else doing it for you like myself is you're only getting a very small fraction of that mm -hmm. so it becomes a motivation factor like uh i really heavily advertise subscribing to my channel because a good portion of that does get budgeted towards what i can count on and that's monthly right whereas mm -hmm. with shirts if i turn my twitter into a hey buy my shirt machine i would start losing <laughs> followers it'd be less interesting it would kind of cut into the integrity that is me as a character so that goes Go back ahead. to the Maples thing, too. Like, you can't just constantly say, hey, you right. know, buy my shirt, buy my shirt, buy my shirt. People are going to be less inclined the more they hear it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely talk about it. The adver I advertise every once in a while out there, mm -hmm. and it does okay. But unless you're a mega, mega big star, that's not really something you, you count on, I don't think. You know, I mean, what's that guy, the, the LOL player? He says he made, like, a million bucks off his Oh, yeah, oh, fuck that guy. That's Fucking Ocelot? I want to see the stats yeah. from him saying that he makes whatever absurd. Didn't, what was it? It was like 500k that, yeah. euros or something a year. And I Didn't was like, th there's a lot of law players that get really good stream numbers. And I know they make good money off of their stream more than anything else. But there's no fucking way that guy makes 500k euros a year. That yeah, was bullshit. Was Didn't insane. Thorin or someone talk to the team manager and say like, and they were like, yeah, we think he's making up these numbers even like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that came it's out. it's total yeah. bullshit. I think it's more of like he was hyping himself up for the fact that hopefully the hysteria that he makes that much would exactly. make him into someone that is really that credible and he could go out and find sponsors or whatever bullshit he was looking to do. That's bullshit. <laughs> I don't. I, I think he had an argument with fucking Last Shadow, who I know Jeff knows of over like last shadow coached his team or something yes and he wouldn't pay him and it was like 50 bucks or something and he had to fucking like harass ocelot for that 50 bucks and then he still didn't get paid someone who's making fucking 500k euros that's different a year. Chris, you got that money gotta hold on to it man oh yeah that, <laughs> he's, that much. Bucks, he's man. got that money i mean he doesn't let it go so mm, jesus yeah but uh okay so let's get back on top of here chris so yeah, shirts. Uh, maybe not. Uh, personally, I know uh, I've been selling I, I, my what. I'm just gonna say real quick. The yeah. biggest source of income for us is like you know, ad revenue is so so flaky. Sometimes sometimes you'll make a lot. Sometimes you'll make very very none. Subscriptions on Twitch are consistent. They're awesome. It, it, people argue like, well, I don't want to support Twitch, but like the thing is, so whether you like it or not, it's good to help them. Um, you know, so it's it, it's a thing where like it's a consistent number you can look at. I can look at my number and I say, okay, we got say 500 subs flat. I know what my money is going to look like next month at the bare minimum, and that gives me more flexibility of what I can work with. I know my limitations, and I'm not going to go spend all this money we don't have because maybe I'm hoping for one sick donation or something, right? So I mean, as far as 
what's available i say to the public because not even everybody has access to merchandise not everybody has a spreadsheet account or whatever i think subscriptions on twitch have got to be the number one without question yeah i mean yes yes and no i feel like uh you you put out a lot of content for subscribing uh i feel like subscribing can go you can take you as far as you'll let it take you like do you give enough perks do you you know you know do you try to do uh things with your subscribers uh do you have good emotes uh it's definitely like the easiest way to start uh making money for uh your tournaments and uh we'll we'll go into uh the last but not least topic of the financials uh the godfather of starcraft destiny uh it's supposed a little bit outdated <laughs> uh, it's supposed a little the outdated. godfather of starcraft well i mean when you're gonna hear how much money he fucking made off of his tournament then i mean we can uh ease i yeah. mean it's a community uh. tournament and he was the most successful therefore being the godfather of starcraft when it comes to community tournaments wouldn't be too far I stretched <laughs> no made more than battles <laughs> your your wording here is very careful Desro. what i mean don't okay. don't you he fucking go a, there all right Starcraft, Starcraft, successful the tournament. Of community tournaments and uh just yeah okay all right so anyway I, um destiny made a decent amount of profits there's so much text here um so he ran an indiegogo that made a total of uh, five thousand nine hundred dollars i think and uh i mean he um God damn it. what yeah, oh yeah, he paid himself uh, very generously. So he started the Indiegogo saying he was going to put back some of the money he made into the next one. And then uh, he when changed... When the fuck the is the next exactly, one? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, yes. So for, there was... Yeah. Hang on, no, Desmond, because you were yeah. talking about this before the show, before you're too far into this topic, because I know yes. you're going to get hyped about it. You were talking about how, Des how Destiny made bank off this, and that's fine. But if he did, then why hasn't he run another? Like, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of factors to filter in, of course. But if this was a gold mine, you'd think he'd bet it every month. Mm -hmm. Well... Let me also set the tone of this too, because I actually I was a part of that. I casted it. I also read his, what do we call it, post tournament yeah. report. Yeah, post mortem. TB kind of coined that term <laughs> for these thread. tournaments. <laughs> um, but I think this this brings up a really interesting to topic of discussion for me because I followed very closely. Destiny worked his ass off for this. He actually not to like compare dicks or something like that, but as mm -hmm. far as from what I can tell, or at least from my following of this. The tears, the interaction, the reporting on on what they're gonna get out of this is like he's he's actually kind of scarily accountant like in his in his uh, thoroughness with this. Like he was very thorough with it, and he worked really hard. And then I thought one of the funniest things about this afterwards was when he reported that he paid himself what he did, which for it was like a month's work or something like that. It was several thousand dollars. People were like, that is. That's absolutely See, outrageous that you pay yourself that money. Well, hang on one second. How many old people but, do you think watch I'm okay Starcraft? with it? <laughs> a big part of the reason I'm okay with it is, on, is several. And the most logical one is, one, he was completely open about this. If it would have been, like, a secret page 19 tier with 17 pages in front of it of, like, you know, dick pics or something like that and just nothing else, <laughs> then I would be very upset that he snuck in, oh, by the way, 85, you know, 40% of this is going to me. But he didn't. He said, I'm going to pay myself this, and here's why. I work really hard for this. I'm putting it in. This is me investing into something. Uh, and then the second tier of, a, of this being hilarious is that there's this weird gaming aversion to content makers making money. It's really uncomfortable for a lot of people. They're like, you, you hang on. You hosted something, and you oh, made man. money from games? You, fu you fucking. And they're like, where do I... Let's go report it. Let's go. I can't. Let's get on the forums. And they get so mad. And, and it just Destiny was one of my favorite people to do this because he put it down hard. Each person, like, he, he did, he went a little bit internet psycho on it. Like, every guy's like, you shouldn't have paid yourself. And then he was like, ba -da -ba 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 Destiny logic, which is like, you know, based loosely in logic and then, you know, mostly armchair quarterbackism. But it was, I was, I was on his side with this. It's stupid that people are so against that. So, he was up front with it. He worked hard. I followed that. And then he uh, made money. And that upset people. And I, I can easily defend that for him, too. Mm -hmm. I, th I think one of the more logical reasons of why it's okay for Destiny specifically to make money from this is that he's a. it's easy for people to look at him and then see, like, okay, if he put in 
this amount of time, he took it away from his normal job, which is streaming. Mm -hmm. So he probably would have made more money doing other things besides this tournament, aka just streaming the normal shit that he does. So when he does this and you look at the money he he made, you're probably like, okay, that's a lot of money, especially when you compare it to these other tournaments that we were talking about previously where they be, like they barely break even or they lose money and they still invest a shitload of time. But when you look at Destiny, it's easy to see like he he could have <laughs> easily made more money just by playing games and fucking playing around on his own Twitch channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He didn't play a single ad <laughs> during that whole tournament. So it's a, a lot a lot a lot easier to be like, okay, well, we should just be lucky that he ran that tournament because he could have benefited more from doing something else. It, yes, no, I, I agree with that, but there's there's a medium ground there. There are middle ground, excuse me, too, because whenever in this, he didn't do this, and you're not saying this, but some people do. Some people do something like this, and then they martyr themselves way too far on the other end of the spectrum where they're like, I could have made thousands of dollars, and I did But let's be honest, as we talked about earlier, you're advertising yourself, you're providing a new service, you're... It, it comes off as very, like, charitable. Like, oh, savior-based destiny, doing this labor of love for for the community. Like, oh, Bible thump, thank you so much for doing that. And, but, it, like, at the end of the day, it's a giant service to himself as well. It's a, it's a we-win situation, so that's why I'm completely okay with it. But there have been a few times in the past where some people do this, and then they, like, they come out and they're like, well, because I ran that tournament that had 30,000 people watching and I only made $5,000, it's going to be a tight month this year. My uh, my $25,000 dog is going to have to eat actual cold food for the first time in, in its three months' life. You know, and it's like, well, mm, I don't feel bad for you in any way. And it's kind of weird that you're convincing people that you do sound like you're in a bad situation. You know, mm -hmm. I think I want to actually talk about the, the ad revenue part of this real quick. I know a lot of you guys, and I think this applies to everyone here except for really me and fear dragon we got here late in the scene we never saw what good ad revenue looks like no. so for me when i ran my tournament and i i made like you know i think day one i, I probably can't give them direct numbers i'll get in trouble but let's say like 250 300 bucks like i was ecstatic i was like holy fucking shit this is amazing and i'm sure for you guys it's probably like well eight thousand viewers for 200 bucks or whatever like that's garbage but the thing i look at is and I talk, I actually talked to Destiny a little bit about this that kind of blew me away, was I think he didn't run ads for multitudes of reasons other than just like, you know, fuck ads. But there was a situation where if I've got 8,000 viewers barely, and I know like most people are using ad block nowadays or Twitch Turbo or whatever, like if I can make that much money and he's got, you know, a good 4,000 block more viewers. And what you guys have to understand too is like when you run ads, like there's a significant difference from like, 200 to 400 than there is from 1200 to 1400 like the, the numbers just exponentially gets better than what people you have when you run ads so for destiny to have like say 12,000 people on stream and you didn't run a single ad like on one hand it's like great cool you did this great service you didn't run ads you you give us quality content but on the other it's like you kind of also lost out oh, you know what this is a good analogy it's like dropping a mule instead of scanning like instead of running ads like he could have he could have made more money is the thing so this tournament is like already successful and you consider it could have been better. There's a lot of different aspects to this, but that was the one that kind of blew me away that he didn't run ads during his event. Like, and I, I, I kind of get why, but it still was like, whoa. Like, mm. I that think too, that's interesting too, because I agree with you, but there's actually now there's a new, there's kind of a newish culture in the last, I don't know, I want to call it a year, but this is completely out of my butt. Uh, where if you do run too many commercials or really commercials at all, you're actually going to lose a certain portion of viewers because Cause you're so many people ad block and so many people have turbo that there's just not commercials anymore. Like back in the day that you're referencing when, when Huck and I would stream during Christmas and we had, oh, baby. Up, oh, baby. oh my God. <laughs> and the we would explain baby. to the viewers, we're like, you know what? Fucking well, I, back then too, there wasn't as much ad blocking. It's on the rise as opposed to like in the middle or, you know, lower it's, it's growing exponentially. So more people are doing it. So at that time it was more acceptable to run commercials. Whereas now, when I stream, I run, so I'll stream for five hours. I'll run uh, two 90 second, one 60 second, and a three minute at the very end. That's all the commercials I'll run. And each time I do it, 400 fucking people go, God dang it, commercials, I'm out of here. Fuck this. And they walk away. You know, and it's very different. So I do agree with you. You obviously make money from running commercials. No question about that. But the amount of money you make is, is, a little, is a lot less, and the people that you lose for it kind of de-incentivizes you to want to run commercials, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. I get, uh, I, I've definitely felt that, too, with the smaller tournament cast and stuff. Just to, to go back to Destiny real quick, because I want you guys to discuss this. Uh, so you got a little bit of shit for it. 
Um, and I think it just came down to his expectations when he first started, saying, I'll put whatever I make into the next one. And then doing 360, or actually 180 on that, and uh, taking all the sponsor money and paying himself, which, I mean, it's fine. Like you, like Alex said, uh, I, he's not he, streaming, so... Wait, wait. Is, is he... I, I thought he was still doing the next one sometime. Yeah, no, no, but there's no money towards the next one. What he said, he's, what he said was, whatever money I make, I'll put it into the next one. And then in his post-mortem, he said, nah, you know, I'm paying myself the next one entirely crowdfunded. This is how it's going to go. So hmm. whenever he does the next one, now there's no money. So And this time he wants to raise $10,000 is what he said when that post was made, which was uh, in August. So, I mean, so he got a, he got some crap for it, but he kind of had wrong expectations to begin with. And I want you guys to talk about this. Chris. Well, I, it really depends how long this next one is. I mean, if he waits until like fucking Legacy of the Void comes out and he's like, all right, Destiny 2 time, baby. Then I'm going to be like, okay, that's kind of stupid. But And it also depends how much money he has. If he goes to raise, raise the money and the community has to dish out 100% of it again, it's kind of sucky. Just mm -hmm. because people put in money based on the fact that if there was leftover money, it would carry over to the next one. Uh, so I think people would be disappointed in that. It just Ooh. It really depends how much money he has in the next one and uh, when it is. There, there has to be something said about that though, real quick, before we get too far off that point. Where if you're, if you're ever donating money to somebody, and I, I stress this all the time, like, don't give away money that you don't mind parting with. Like, you well, have to but, expect no return. Like, if you put, if I get five bucks, but he should bucks, still be held accountable if he said one thing and then it doesn't happen. There is an accountability I, there. I mean, I yes, agree, but, I agree with the people. Like, if you, I, I would never give money to something unless I trust that person. But if he held another tournament and he said xyz is gonna happen i wouldn't 100 percent trust destiny anymore about that fact because he did say that and that's not happening now i'm mm. not saying people should right, even, always even I... believe 100 percent, but you have to hold people accountable if they say one thing and then that doesn't happen there yeah, is I a thought... level of accountability there the problem with just yeah, going by like that sort of like train of thought and just saying like, you know, you should just assume that the money is gone is that you're like when you do that, you're kind of just encouraging people to say, well, if I can just convince enough people of this and I can get away with this, then I'll get away with the money. Like you need to try yeah. and hold people accountable. Even yeah, and I agree. Like you shouldn't be investing money that you're not like willing to lose, but you should still hold people accountable if like things do successfully get kickstarted or Indiegogo or whatever. Mm -hmm. Jeff, any thoughts? Um, it's interesting. I, di I did not know that or see that, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to be the wiser 29-year-old Jeff, whereas the old one would just fly off the handle and remark on that, but I'm hoping that there's more to it than that. I'm hoping, because for me, what makes that semi, because at, at first glance, to say all the money earned from this will go to the next tournament, and then after the tournament, after people have donated and, and contributed, to then be like, ah, psych, actually that money's going to me, but like, you know, We'll totally do it again. That in and of itself would be un unacceptable. What I, I'm hoping, and I'm gonna. This is something that you know, a, a couple years ago I would never say, but I'm gonna give Stephen the benefit of the doubt and just assume that he is obviously more professional and he had some kind of reasoning for that. And you have to put in the the proper like uh, asterisk. You know, he has to he has to say like, look, I know I said this, but upon reflection and seeing where everything went. I cannot afford to do that in order to pay for my frickin' child and, you know, for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it this way, but I promise to work doubly hard to raise money for the next one and, and do another service for you guys. I hope it was something along I've, those lines, right? I was going to throw out there, I'm not going to lie, I, I kind of hang out on his uh, girlfriend's stream from time to time too because I know several people there. And, I mean, she's talked before about how he, do, he is planning to do another, in fairness here, before we all go down this assumption that he's never going to run another tournament. So it's like, I mean, it's unprecedented. It's not something that she's been built up to say. It's just been casually dropped that, yeah, he's definitely planning to do another. The question's when. And that's what Hawk said. Like, if it comes at Legacy of the Void, that's when you kind of sneer, right? That's when you're kind of like, oh, okay, well, it's been like a year and a half. Like, okay, I guess you held your promise, but like, you know, Sons of Starcraft style or whatever. <laughs> like, uh, no, that's not what we're saying. Um, so to wrap well, it up. I, what? No, but I just, if that is what he was saying. If that does happen, that's going to be shitty. And, yeah. uh, Maybe, maybe, because I, I was, I'm, I'm like Jeff here. I didn't know that until today. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. was under the assumption that he was going into it knowing that he was going to have a profit, and he was just 
that's what he was going to take home. But if he promised that, that's the shitty part that comes in. But once again, maybe like if it's a if it's a line of like, I won't do another tournament unless I'm able to take away this profit. Mm -hmm. Then I would rather him take the profit than not run another tournament. Obviously, mm -hmm. so ho hopefully that's the case. Yeah, so uh, that was the most successful community tournament we've ever had, the StarCraft community. And we went from, uh, we covered basically every uh, big community tournament. I don't think there's anything we missed. Uh, foreign Hold by Maddles. There's probably some, you know, previous ones that we didn't cover uh, way back. But uh, we're going to take a small break and then we'll be back with, actually, uh, I guess, uh, Rifkin, you can do your shout out since you have to go. To cast your yeah, 32 I gotta guys go prep for yes. Yeah, I gotta go prep for 32 boys for cop. If you guys wanna watch that, make sure you finish watch your Remax first, but it starts in about 45 minutes from now. Huck is gonna be playing uh, second today. Or I'm putting up there, but he's probably somewhere else on the overlay. Uh, it'll be Huck versus Major second. It'll be Intense versus Jon Snow first. It should be some pretty good times. It's the first North American group. Uh, all best of three is pretty standard stuff. Uh, Twitch.tv slash base trade TV. Oh, thank you again for coming on and talking uh, financials. So guys, we'll be right back in just about three minutes. Stay tuned.